JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFT's weekly market outlook webinar for the week October the 26th until October the 30th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered, considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, uh, we have three major central banks deciding on monetary policy this week and those are the ECB, the Bank of Canada and the Bank of Japan. We also have Australia CPIs for the third quarter, the first estimate of US GDP for the same quarter, Eurozone GDP for the third quarter and the preliminary CPIs for the block uh, for the month of, uh, of October. So let's uh, begin with uh, today. Monday is a relatively light day with the only data worth mentioning being the German IFO survey for October and the US new home sales for September. With regards to the IFO survey, the current assessment index is expected to have increased to 89.8 from 89.2, but the expectations one is forecast to have declined to 96.5 from 97.7. This would drive the business climate index down to 93 from 93.4. US new home sales are expected to have slowed to 2.8% month over month from 4.8% uh, the previous month. Tuesday's calendar is uh, light as well. During the Asian morning, we have New Zealand's trade balance for September, while later in the day, we get uh, the US durable goods orders for the same month. Headline orders are expected to have increased uh, at the same pace as in August, which is 0.5% month over month while the core rate is anticipated to have declined to 0.4% month over month from 0.6%. Uh, now on Wednesday, the main event on the agenda may be the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. At its prior gathering, the Bank of Canada kept interest rates unchanged at 0.25%, repeating that they will stay there until the 2% inflation target is sustainably achieved. Officials also reiterated uh, the view that they will continue with their QE program until the economic recovery is well underway and that they stand ready to adjust um, they stand ready to adjust their programs if market conditions change. They said that both the global and Canadian economies are evolving broadly in line with their scenario outlined in July but added that the bounce back in activity in the third quarter looks to be faster than anticipated uh, in July. Since the previous meeting, employment data for September showed that the unemployment rate declined more than anticipated, with the economy gaining uh, more jobs than initially forecasted. What's more, headline inflation for the month accelerated to 0.5% year-over-year from 0.1%, while the core rate rose to 1% year-over-year from 0.8%. Although still below the bank's objective of 2%, accelerating inflation combined with, improving, with an improving labor market may allow Bank of Canada officials to sit uh, comfortably on the sidelines for another gathering and reiterate their neutral language. The loony may gain some word on the absence of any, signal, of any signals with regards to imminent, ins, with regards to imminent uh, easing, but as a commodity-linked currency, we believe uh, its broader path will remain dependent to developments surrounding the broader market sentiment, and especially the U.S. elections uh, next week. As uh, for Wednesday's uh, data releases, the most important one seems to be Australia's CPIs for the third quarter. Expectations are for the headline CPI rate to have rebounded to 0.7% year-over-year from minus 0.3% and for the trimmed mean one to have ticked down to 1.1% year-over-year from 1.2%. The weighted mean CPI rate is forecast to have remained unchanged at 1.3% year-over-year. 
At its latest gathering, the RBA kept its monetary policy settings unchanged, disappointing those who those looking for further easing after Deputy Governor Guy De Bell flagged the prospect. Having said that, though a couple of weeks ago, RBA Governor uh, Philip Lowe said that more stimulus is possible with the options including both buying and a small rate cut. On top of that, the minutes of the latest RBA gathering revealed that officials discussed cutting rates and, uh, ban and buying longer dated uh, debt, which suggests that other members besides uh, Lowe and De Bell share the same view. Thus, even if the CPI is improved somewhat, the chances for further action at the next gathering are likely to remain high. According to the ESX 30-day uh, interbank cash rate futures uh, yield curve, there is a 74% probability for interest rates to be cut to zero. Market chatter suggests that rates could be cut to 0.10%, a move that is more than fully priced in. Now on Thursday, the central bank torch will be passed to the Bank of Japan and the ECB. During the Asian morning, the Bank of Japan is forecast uh, to hold off from acting, but several reports suggest that officials will proceed with downgrading their economic forecasts. In any case, as it happened during most of the latest Bank of Japan meetings, the yen is unlikely to respond. We believe that the safe haven currency will stay mostly responsive to developments surrounding the broader investor appetite. Now passing the ball to the ECB, when they last met, officials of uh, this bank kept monetary policy untouched, reiterating that they stand ready to adjust all their instruments as appropriate to ensure that inflation moves towards its aim in a sustained manner. Since uh, the previous meeting, data showed that uh, the headline CPI rate for September slid further into the negative territory, with the core rate standing at just 0.2% year over year. What's more, last Friday, the preliminary PMIs for October showed that the services sector slipped deeper into contraction, dragging the composite, in the composite index below the boom or bust 50 zone for the first time since, since June. Combined with the fact that the coronavirus is spreading at a very fast pace around the block, forcing uh, nations to introduce uh, restrictive uh, measures, the aforementioned data suggests that further stimulus is necessary by this central bank, and even if we don't get it at this meeting, we believe that policymakers will provide strong hints that some form of action will be served at one of the upcoming gatherings. Clear signals over more easing soon may prove uh, negative for the euro. Now, as for Thursday's economic indicators, the first uh, estimate of the US GDP for the third quarter is coming out, with a forecast pointing to a 31.9% quarter-over-quarter seasonally adjusted annual rate rebound, following a 31.4% contraction in the second quarter. That said, the Atlanta Fed GDP Now model suggests uh, a 35.3% uh, rebound, and thus we would, uh, we would consider the risks surrounding the official release as, as tilted to the upside. Germany's preliminary inflation data for October is also coming out, with a CPI rate expected to have slid to minus 0.3% year-over-year from minus 0.2%, and the HICP1 to have held steady at minus 0.4%. Now on Friday, during the Asian morning, we get the usual end of month data dump from Japan. The unemployment rate for September is expected to have ticked up to 3.1% from 3%, while the jobs to applications ratio is forecast to have remained unchanged at 1.04. Industrial production for the same month is anticipated to have accelerated to 3.2% month over month from 1%, while no forecast is available for retail sales. The Tokyo CPIs for October are also coming out, but no forecast is available for this data set either. Now, during the European session, we have the Eurozone's first estimate of GDP for the third quarter and the bloc's preliminary CPIs uh, for October. Both the year-over-year -year rates of the GDP and the headline CPI are expected to have uh, are expected to stay unchanged at minus 15 percent and minus 0.3 percent respectively while no forecast is available for the core uh, cpi rate um, the core hicp one is expected to have held steady at uh, 0.4 percent year over year later in the day in the u.s personal income and spending for september alongside the, the core pce index for the month are coming out 
Personal income is expected to have rebounded 0.5% month over month after sliding 2.7% in August, while the spending rate is forecast to have held steady at 1% month over month. The core PC index is expected to have ticked up to 1.7% from 1.6%. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and, uh, and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 8.30 a.m. GMT time. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT just fair and direct.